Well, here's an algebra problem that you'll, you will see over and over again. We've got two angles here, DEG and GEF. We have algebraic expressions for the two, and the two are a linear pair. Remember, we can assume collinearity from the diagram. So exercise number, this is exercise 18 from this section. Let's set up the arithmetic. Now, I know that this expression and this expression have to add up to 180 degrees. Why? Because it's a linear pair. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just make a little note on the right-hand side so I can get used to showing reasons. Now, I can do some arithmetic here. I'm just simply going to, I'm simply going to combine terms. And, well, okay, this is algebra. I know you can handle this. I'll add 10 to both sides of the equation. And then, of course, I'll perform my division. And that's it. But that, again, gives us the value for x. And if I want to, oh, let's say I want to find out what the individual angles are, then it's time to substitute. When I substitute, it's going to look like this. Take each of these expressions, replace the value of x, and I can work that out. And certainly, I'm going to come up with these two measurements. Oh, one final check, 67 plus 113. Last time I checked, 180, 180 degrees. If it doesn't work out that way, you probably made a mistake. So do the, always check your work, and that one is done. We're going to start on this word problem. Notice no diagram given. It's up to you to draw it. That's your first step. Draw a picture. I've got angles one and two that are a linear pair. I purposely made one angle smaller. And I'm going to assign the variable x to that one. Now, I could have assigned x to the larger angle, but you'll see why I chose it this way. Because I'm saying, hmm, one angle is four times the measure of the other. So angle two is four times as big as angle one. Let's come up with an expression. This angle's x, don't say y. And we have to say, in terms of x, the other angle is 4x. It's four times as big. Now it's pretty straightforward because angles 1 and 2 add up to 180. Therefore, 4x and x add up to 180. And you've got this from here. It's pretty easy. x is 36. And we substitute back in. We're going to have a 36 degree angle and a 144 degree angle. And we're done. Let's solve for x and y here. The real objective is to learn which equation to use. Now, I've got three obvious relationships. Angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. They're vertical angles. But look at this, x and y, two different variables. That's like giraffes and elephants. That's not going to help me. I look at 1 and 2. They are a linear pair. Again, giraffes and elephants. I can't solve that equation. But I'm looking at this one, 2 and 3. Hmm, same animal. I've got x's and x's. That's the one I choose. So now, let's make an equation. Those are a linear pair. I can combine my terms. I can simplify. And the simplifying here, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. Then, of course, it's time to divide. And there I go. So I've got my reasons. Now, let's say... I said, okay, I got that. So I now know I can, I've got that relationship figured out. Let's move on to another relationship. Go back to this one. I now know the measure of angle three. I've got seven tens or 70 degrees. Uh huh. Well, that's pretty straightforward. So if, if I've got two Y on this side, I know that, of course, each Y must be 35. So remember, our objective was to solve for x and y. And there you go. You've got 10 and 35. Well, here's another chance for us to do some algebra. Same as before. We've got three angles, and we have three relationships. I'm looking at 1 and 3. And again, I've got x and y. So I'm going to discard that, possible, or that possibility. And let's look at angles 1 and 2. And again, I've got the y and the x. Well, that's not going to be very helpful either. So let's check out the third relationship. Angle 2 and 3, 
they've got two relationships with x. That I can work with. So I can set those up together and we'll just go through the arithmetic really quickly. We're going to combine terms and this subtract the 26, divide by 11, and there you go. So now what we can do is, well, let's have a look at some of the measures here. I know that x is 14. I know two 14s are, or sorry, three 14s, 3x over here. Measure of angle 2 is 42. The measure of angle 3, 8 times 14 plus 26, 138. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't asked that. I just want to know my x's and y's. That's my x. Let's find the y. See which relationship we're going to use. We have a couple choices. And I've said right there, yep, so let's, let's uh, clear this up. And let's solve here for the, for the y. And I know here that the x and the y, I'm going to use angles 1 and angles 2. And we'll set, the, and we'll add those up, set them equal to 180. So, here we go. And, of course, I come up with a y of 20. So I had before, I've, I had x is 14, and now I find y is 20. Again, I was just solving for x and y here. Well, number 40 uh, in your exercises, let's find the measure of these two angles, a and b, we're given to be complementary, and we have these variable expressions. Another algebra exercise. We don't have a diagram. We don't really need it. We're just going to set up this problem like we did before. And we're going to justify with some reasons. Right here, we can say our definition, two angles are complementary, then their measures add up to 90 degrees. We'll perform a substitution, substituting these two variable expressions. And we'll simplify. We're simplifying there. We're combining terms. You know the rest. We're going to add 10 to both sides of the equation and divide. So again, we've solved for the variable x. And let's perform our substitution for the measure of angle a. And then we'll simplify. We, I see there we have 78 degrees. Well, for angle b, perform a similar substitution, and we solve this one, and I see 12 degrees. And one last mental check, 78 plus 12, that equals 90. So it looks like we've got this one done. Well, let's do another uh, exercise involving algebra. Just like the last one, we're solving for the measures of angle A and B. This time there's supplements, and just like last time, we've got two variable expressions. So, set up the equation. We know the two angles add to 180 degrees. That's the definition of a supplement. I perform the substitution. And, of course, I'm going to combine the terms. Oh, by now you got this down. In this case, I'm going to subtract, then divide. And I've solved for the variable x. And let's perform the substitution in the case of measure of angle A, I'm going to see 124 degrees. I substitute into B, and when I solve for that, I'm going to end up with 56 degrees. One last check, 124 plus 156. Yep, that's 180, so we did it right. All right, the beloved clock problems. We all love these. We see we've got 12 divisions in the clock. Um, for the hours, and each of those represents 30 degrees. Uh, 12 goes into 360 30 times. Now, before someone mentions the obvious yes, and we know that, in fact, this hour hand would have advanced another 5 degrees, but we're going to neglect that for now. We're just going to use the hands as they're given. And we'll say that these angles represent 30 degrees and 60 degrees, which, of course, would be complementary angles. Well, one more clock problem with the hours of 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock, and they would appear to form the angles 30 degrees and 150, and we'll say those are supplementary.